You guys there? We here. Psalms 29. Look at verse number 18. You said Proverbs. I'm sorry. Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29. Verse number 18. You guys there? Where there is no vision. Vision. Another word is revelation. Right? Where there is no vision. Revelation. What is what is vision, guys? Sight. What is vision, guys? Sight. It's not just seeing. Someone said looking into the future. Right? A vision is more than just seeing. It's a revelation. What is a revelation? Hmm? Accomplishment? Knowledge to reveal or uncover. There you go. To uncover. Because you can't see it. <laughs> Sorry about that one. Amen? You can't, look, a vision is not just seeing, but you're seeing something that has been uncovered. Amen? You're seeing something that has been uncovered. Who uncovered it? Jesus did it. He wants you to see something. Amen? And most of us today have an issue with vision. Because we can't see the thing that's being covered. We can't see it. You know what it is, more, more times than not, it's the things that we can't see in the future. Amen? That's why we tend to look at today as a present thing, and we see what's going on today, but we have no vision for the future. We can't see it because it's covered. I believe with all my heart this morning, God wants to uncover some things so that you can start seeing something in your future. Amen? Because, you're, again, guys, it's not just about work. It's about doing something with the Lord or doing something for the Lord. Or doing something with the Lord included in it. Because revelation comes by hearing. It does. It really does. Revelation comes by hearing, right? Where does faith come from? What if you have faith but no vision? What if you have faith but no vision? What happens? Faith without vision is dead. Dead. There's no, you find you have. There's no purpose. There's no reason to live. You'll never grow. Either. You'll never grow. Can you guys see that? Yeah. What if you have vision but no faith? It's still dead. You see, you might see something in the future, but if you don't have faith to go after it. See what I'm saying? Faith without works. works is dead. Revelation has something to do with works. God wants to reveal in you something else that you can do. That doesn't include money. Amen? Because yeah. money is something that is secondary or third or fourth in your life. It's not the common purpose why you're here. If it was, we wouldn't be here. I'm just telling you the truth. God didn't create you just to work. He created you because you have gifts and talents that He wants you to use. Amen? Amen. And sometimes, if not all the time, but sometimes these gifts and talents will enhance the work that you're doing. Amen? It's just like me this morning. Okay? I found out my gift. I found out the reason why I'm here. And it's not to paint. And it's not to drive a truck. And it's not to work. But my work is in teaching. 
isn't teaching a gift? Yeah. yeah. It is a gift. It's one of the fivefold ministries, right? Pastor, teacher, evangelist. Amen? It's one of the fivefold. And listen, I love to teach. I got paid for teaching. I taught people how to drive, uh, uh, drive a truck. And you know what, man? I loved it. For five years, man, I loved it. It was like, ah! I woke up every morning. You know why? Because I love to teach. There was a bunch of guys and gals over there at the school that wanted to learn how to drive a truck, and I was there every morning. I bright and early, even before the guys, the other instructors were there, I was there. You know why? Because that fueled my heart, man. It wasn't about the money. It was about getting into someone's life who had nothing and, and bringing something out of nothing and giving them an opportunity to see something in the future. Amen? Amen. Come on now. I loved it, man, because I was able to bring something out of nothing and give them something that they could see in the future. Can I say that one more time? I was able to bring something out of nothing to where they could get something that they could see in their future. Amen? And it's like, man, that was powerful. Woo! I gave them an opportunity to see something different. I didn't know I could drive a truck. Woo! -hoo! Now you can. Amen? I'm just saying. Like myself, it was like dormant within me. My grandma kept on saying, I think you should be a truck driver. What? <laughs> she had a dream of me driving a truck. What? You know, I just... <clears throat> no one in my family was a truck driver. Nobody. You know? But it was kind of weird because everything I was doing in the church was driving. I was driving a van, driving a bus, driving this, driving that, driving people here and there. Do we not still do that today? Yeah. For some reason, this gift of driving with, with is in me. I'm serious. It's, it, it, it is something that I have brought into the ministry because that's who I am. I like driving. It's like Forrest Gump. I keep on running. You know? I just I just like to drive. I just Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> you guys understand me? It's something in me. I can't stop. You know, I, I, I can drive for hundreds of miles and be okay. Hundreds of miles. And you guys may think I'm loony. A lunatic, but that's how I'm made up. I ain't got nothing to do with you know, driving. My wife, she can't drive the way I can. I can, but you know what? She's right next to me in case I need to pull over. Amen? Amen. You see, but she has the same intuition within her because we tend to mesh well. She's super low. We tend to work well <laughs> together. Amen? I'm just saying, that's who I am. I like to drive. So I, I'm using that. And I'm seeing that, yes, I like to drive, but it wasn't necessarily... Again, I could drive for 600 miles a day, 1,200 miles in two days, be across the country in three days. I'm serious. You know, and it's crazy. But I'm lonely. And I'm by myself. And that is not a good me. You guys like being by yourself? No. I don't like being by myself. For, for a few days, it's not a big thing. I'm singing rock and roll, whatever. Ah, I'm by myself. Ah, you know, after three or four days, I'm by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. After two weeks of being out there, I'm by myself. I'm by myself. I don't want to be. <laughs> you guys hear me? You'll never stop. It doesn't work. No. Amen. I'll do it. <laughs> I'm breaking something open in him. Amen. I'm breaking it open right now. Amen. Okay, but can't you guys understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I love to drive, but it wasn't the thing that fulfilled me. What's fulfilling me is the fact that I can train people 
to drive, and I'm now in a group of people that I flourish. Amen? Amen. Well, then the school closed. And here I am again, all by myself, right? And, and it, it wasn't working, guys. I need to find out who I am and where I flourish and then get back into that place. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then God got me into the ministry. And that's where I've been. I haven't stopped since then. Amen? I'm just saying, that's who I am. I found out who I am. And I'm flourishing. I don't need to have anything else but this thing flourishing within me. Because, again, a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Amen? And that's where I need to find myself. A, man, his gift, a, a man's gift makes room for him, right? A man's gift makes room for him. I have a place where I can grow. How about you guys? Oh, yeah. Have you guys found room for yourself, for your gift, so that you can, you know, progress and grow in the thing that God has called you to be? Because that thing, you're not going to have to need money for. Even though money is, is essential, but you're not focused on money. You're focused on who you are and what your gift is, and you want that gift to grow. Amen? Amen? That, that's why some people, they, they take their gift, whatever it is, their guitar, you know what they're doing? No, they're practicing. Hello. They're stringing it. You're, 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 you're practicing. You know why? Because that's something that's in you, right? Yep. Hello. Some people, that, that's their desire. Some people are mechanic again, right? They've got a wrench or some kind of tool in their hand that that's what they do, right? I'm, I'm telling you the truth, but don't use it for money. Use it for the glory of God. Use it for the kingdom. Because there's other purposes for gifts. Amen? Amen? Amen. Hello. You guys Hello. out there? The Bible says, without a vision, people perish. It's sad to think that we can have faith, but without vision, without that revealing who we are, we will succumb to going back to our own life. Check this out. The Bible says the people without a vision perish or they will cast off their restraint, right? They will cast off their focus. What does that mean? That one time you see what you see, but being that there's no faith behind it, you're now just throwing that vision away because you can't really believe that, that it's going to come to pass. Amen? I, I'm, I'm just... See, a vision is bigger than you. A vision is more than what you can presently do. I'm just saying that I, I, I would not be able to see this 20 years ago. Doing what I'm doing today, with everything that I'm doing today, I would have no clue. But see, the vision that was cast for my life, my grandma was saying, man, it's even bigger than what I'm doing today. So much greater. Okay? But for some reason... If I could just be honest, I'm having a hard time seeing that reality. But I'm able to come up into this reality and make something of it. Amen? Amen. I've got to make it fit for myself first, right? And then build my house. Amen? Come on now. At least I'm taking steps of faith to get into that place where my grandma sees or... To those things that still need to be revealed in me. Amen? I'm just saying. But if I'm not taking steps of faith to do things now. I'll, I'll never get to see those things in the future. Amen? I'll cast off my restraint. Or I'll throw that vision out the door. Because I won't think that I would be able to do it. And, and technically you can't do it without faith. Because the Bible says in Hebrews 
that without faith, you can't please God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Abraham, how did Abraham get what he received? Listen. He had faith. Right? Amen. Abraham, the only thing that Abraham had was faith. He did not have a Bible. He didn't have words in a book. All he did was listen to what God was saying, and he activated those things that were said. Amen? Amen. He heard and he acted, uh, acted upon it, right? And because of that, he was able to see things that a, a normal 78-year-old person wouldn't be able to see. Or a 100-year-old person would be able to see. He was able to have a child at 100 years old. God bless him. That seems to be impossible, right? Not for God. No. I'm just saying, not for God. Technically, people were actually living longer than 100 years old back then. The average lifespan of people his age were up and around 150 to 175 years of age. I'm serious. It wasn't uncommon. His father lived to 178 years old. So here he was at a hundred. Technically, he's still a young kid. Am I right? But see, we're looking at, oh, now it's 2,000 years later, you know, and we're barely able to see 75 years old. Come on now. Because we can't see that far ahead. Come on now. Am I right? We succumb to our present nature and our present lifestyle and our present condition even though God says that He can sustain you in years, you're looking at 75 as being old. Technically, 75 for God is still a pretty young man. Amen? Yeah. I'm just saying, can God restore your health? Yes. Can God restore your health? Can God restore your health? Yes. Help me out here. Can God restore your health? Yes. Yes. Can God give you life? Yes. Yes. So why are we thinking as a mortal? Why are we thinking as a mortal man? Why are we thinking that our life is already over when God still hasn't performed in you the gifts and talents that He called in you since the day you were born? Come on now. Why do you think that you don't have a chance because you're now too old? Come on. I'm just asking questions because I'm trying to stir it up. Maybe God still has something for you to do. You're still here, right? You're still here. Still have purpose. Have you found it? You still have purpose. Have you found it? You still have a reason to be here. Have you found that out yet? Has God revealed those things in you? Maybe you guys are retired. Amen? Maybe you guys are retired. Maybe you need to be refired. Come on now. Maybe God needs to refire you and get you reemployed, doing something else for the kingdom. Hello? Who am I speaking to this morning? <laughs> Amen? Inferior faith. Say inferior faith. Inferior, inferior faith. faith. Is that faith at all? No. You know what Jesus says? Oh, you. Little faith. Inferior faith. Oh, you. Little, little faith. Little faith. Inferior. You know what inferior means? You're scared. I ain't scared. <laughs> You know what inferior means? You're scared. That's what it means. I ain't scared. You guys scared? No. Nope. Oh, no. Come on now. Inferior faith means that you're scared. It's not faith at all. You're scared. Look at the Bible and see what these uh, these so-called apostles were saying and doing back then. Why was Jesus so animate and calling them? Listen. Why are you so fearful? Why are you so, you know, why, why are you focused off? Amen? Amen? Here, he had this guy come up to him, right, who had a son who had epilepsy. 
right? This guy had, his son had epilepsy. The epilepsy was causing his son to be thrown in the fire, be thrown in the water, right? It might, might have even been some kind of suicidal type spirit, right? But I'm just saying, these things were out of bounds. These things were doing, these things that were going on were out of bounds, okay? They were not just sickness. It was not just a disease. This thing had a reality of, of hurting somebody, right? Amen. Come on now. Amen. And maybe maybe the disciples were able to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Maybe they were able to, uh, you know, see disease and, and everything, uh, uh, you know, come to uh, no end, right? To where it was dissolved and, and got rid of, right? Amen. Maybe they were able to have faith enough to see that kind of stuff happen. But then here comes a guy whose son had epilepsy. And epilepsy, guys, mind you now, it has no cure. Amen. It doesn't. They can't find out what they can do. All they can do is medicate you. Amen. Am I right? Amen. There's no cure. So it can't be a sickness and it can't be a disease. Come on now. Am I right? Amen. There must be something going on. And there must be something else going on. Amen? Amen? You know what? These guys couldn't do it. These guys tried. Here he comes. Here's my son. Please heal him. Right? The disciples had no clue. They had inferior faith. You know why? Because they were scared. It was something that they had no idea about. Something beyond their faith. Amen? Come on now. Amen. Jesus comes back and says... Oh, ye of little faith. How long will I have to be with you? Amen? Amen. He turns to that, that young man automatically. Say automatically. automatically. He turns to this young man and says, uh, 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 well, let's go to it. I'm sorry. Matthew. Matthew 17. You're already there. <laughs> yes, you are. Matthew 17. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Of what I was told, and this is God's honest truth, I'm not making it up, she fell on her head. Mm -hmm. And that's how she got the epilepsy. Now, she, let's say there was a light. She would make noises. That's called epilepsy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Check this out now. Chapter 17. Verse number 17. The Bible says this. Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. Right? So here's this child being brought to Jesus. And Jesus rebuked. Say rebuked. Rebuked. Jesus rebuked the demon. So there was something else other than sickness and disease that was going on. Right? Up until this time, they had never experienced this. That's why their faith was inferior. They were scared. Would you be scared if you had to uh, confront a demon? Oh, yeah. no. Come on now. But then Jesus calls us faithless. That's scary. We need to rise up. It's time to rise up. It's time to get our revelation and uncover something. Right? Amen. Who are we? Who are we? God's children. If we're God's children, what do we have? Amen? I'm just saying, do we have a little faith? Because again, Sue said it, and it's in this passage, right? If we have the faith as a mustard seed, we can say to this mountain, right? Be removed and be cast into the sea. Well, is that as much faith as we have? Is that what God has given us? Is that what God gives every one of us just a mustard seed of faith? I'm asking questions now. Because if God just gives us a small measure, then that wouldn't be my God. 
I think God gives us everything we need for life. That's what the Bible says, right? God gives me everything I need. Say that with me. God gives me everything I need. God gives me everything I need. God gives me everything I need. Amen? For life. For this situation. Amen? So how much faith do I have? A lot. As much as I need. Amen. Amen. Nothing is impossible. Nothing. Say it. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. To those who believe. Amen. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. What does that mean? You can do all things in Christ who strengthens you. Praise God, brother. You guys hearing me? Nothing is impossible. Okay? So he cast out this demon, right? He cast out the demon. He didn't uh, you know, say all these mighty words. He just cast out the demon. How easy is that? Well, if you have faith, it's very easy. Yep. If you don't have faith, you're going to have to scream and holler. Am I right? Yep. I'm just asking you because I see all these people. And I'm not saying that anything is bad. I'm just saying they're over there. Hyundai, Hyundai, you no, know? they're over there. In the name, in the name. Jesus didn't do that. His disciples didn't do that either. They didn't have to because they seen who they really were. You know, I'm serious now. Peter just had to walk. He didn't even have to say a word. He just had to walk by certain people and his shadow would heal the sick. It's in the Bible. It's in the book of Acts. I'm serious. There's something about Peter. Who was Peter? No different than us. The same spirit that dwells in us is the same spirit that Raised Jesus from the dead. Amen. Didn't Jesus say, greater things shall you do? Come on now, I'm asking questions. Yeah. I want this thing to be revealed in your heart. I want you guys to see with your eyes that greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. So it doesn't matter what comes your way. It doesn't matter who you have to pray for. It doesn't matter what kind of circumstances they're in. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Amen? But you got to believe it. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But if you don't hear and do what the word is saying, it means nothing to you because faith without vision perishes. Amen? Amen. I'm just saying, guys. I want you guys to work it up. I want you guys to be worked up. I want you guys to go out there and start trying these things. Why? Doesn't that not say that we can perfect our faith? Yes. Amen? It says work out your faith, right? Amen. With fear and trembling, right? Amen. Work out your faith. What does that mean? That I may not be perfect in it yet, but I'm working it out. Amen? Amen. Amen. Say it with me. I may not be perfected in my faith, but I'm working it out. Amen? I'm working it out. Can I not practice what I preach? Yes, you can. Can I not practice what I preach? Yes. Can I not practice what I preach? Yes. The doctors do it. They practice medicine. Hello. They don't know what they're doing. They don't. They're practicing on you. That's why it's called a family practice. <laughs> isn't this not good, this coronavirus thing isn't it not a practice are they not just are we not just guinea pigs yeah come on now they don't know if this thing is even real they don't even know if it works that's why they're declaring that you should continue to wear a mask I'm just saying, if it was real, if the thing was good, if the thing was supposed to be what it's supposed to be, then that's it. I should not have to worry anymore. 
The only reason why I think this the whole thing is a farce is because everyone keeps on saying, well, I don't know. I don't know. Well, you should know. Come on now. You've got all the medical practices. You, all these doctors, all these lawyers, all these people that think that they know something don't know nothing. Amen. That's why I'm skeptical about this whole thing. If they don't know anything, then how am I supposed to have faith in what they're doing? How am I supposed to have a vision for my future? It does not give me a vision for my future at this time, does it? Nope. It doesn't give me nothing. Oh, you got to wear that mask. When? How long? I don't know. Why don't you know? You're just practicing on me? Yes. <laughs> That's exactly what they're doing. That's why I don't have any faith in what's going on. The only thing I can have faith in is Jesus Christ. Because he's the author and the finisher of my faith. Amen? Amen? Amen. I'm just saying. Don't be given in to fear. Because fear will destroy your vision. Amen? Amen? Amen. How can you say that you have faith and then you're trembling inside? You have no faith. You know what faith is? Looking at fear dead in the mouth or dead in fear's eyes and say, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I'm serious. I look fear in the eyes and I say, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I'm serious. Yeah. Greater is God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Amen. 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 Look at fear in its face. Listen, I'm not saying that I'm not fearful. I just don't give in to it. Man. I'm not scared. Man. Hello? Listen, what's going to happen even if it does happen? I'm going to die? Is that all that's going to happen? Well, I end up winning if I die. Yep. I end up winning if I die. So whether I live or die, I win. Man. Hello? Am I scared to death? No. no. Why? Because I already have eternal life. Amen. I cannot die. Amen. Hello? Amen. Again, I'm not talking about my body. I'm talking about who I am behind my eyeballs. Amen. Amen? Amen. See, some people need to see that. Some people need to uncover the fact that they are not looking at themselves. That what they need to see is that person behind their eyeballs. Amen. That's the real you. Amen. The soulish the man. The man that has a mind, that has emotions, that has a will. Amen? Amen? That's the real you. How are you doing this morning? How are you doing this morning behind the eyeballs? How are you doing this morning behind your eyeballs? You in fear or you in faith? Faith! Faith! faith. faith. Amen? Amen. We don't, I don't walk by what I see. I walk by faith. I walk by faith. Amen? Because my physical eyes can deceive me. All the time. My physical ears can deceive me. All the time. That's why I can't walk by what I see. I need to walk by faith. It's that man behind my eyeballs. What is he saying? You guys ever listen to that little man that's on the inside? All the time. I'm just asking because it's him that you need to listen to. Amen? Amen. Some people call it a conscience. I call it the Holy Spirit. Because my Holy Spirit within me guides and leads me. That's what the Bible says in John, right? Amen. That the Holy Spirit within me guides and leads me to all truth. Amen? Amen. And the truth will set, set, you, free. set you free. Amen? Amen. Who am I speaking to this morning? Everybody that has a soul and a mind. Amen. Amen. Now, God-inspired vision, God-inspired vision is something that brings life. Amen? The actual word is ha 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 zon Ha. Ha. Right? Ha. Am I saying that right? C-H-A. C -H -A. You're Jewish, right? Zon. Zon. Ha zon. Say ha zon. There you go. Get that clip. Get it in there. 
Come on. Okay? God's vision. That word vision is chazon. Chazon. It says behold. Okay? What does behold mean? Take grasp. Take grasp of. This guy's gifted, man. Take hold of it. Don't just see it, but take hold of it. Now, when we're looking at this thing in the future, can you see it? Yes. Can you take hold of it? Yes. Okay? Because if you can see it and you can grasp it, you can do it. Okay? If you can see it, you can grasp it, and then you can do it. If you can't see it, you can't grasp it. You can't behold it. Right? He says, behold. Behold. That means see with different eyes. Hear with different ears. Look at it through the lens of faith. Amen? Amen. Can I say that again? Look at it through the lens of faith. That means that your natural eyes cannot see it, but you'll need something extra. And these lenses actually help you see correctly. Amen? Amen. Amen. Last year we got a vision. Amen? 2020. 2020 means perfect vision. Amen? Now we got to start thinking differently and looking at things differently to where we can get a grasp of things and go after those things that are before us. Amen? Amen. Because listen... We're not going to die. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Don't listen to the media. We're not going to die. We're not. This is not the end of the world. Come on now. We win. Amen. Either way, we win. Amen. Amen. I'm not listening to all this stuff anymore. Oh, the end of the world. Oh, the rapture. Oh, oh, oh. You know, but we're, listen. Can I be honest with you? You know what the Bible says in the end days? You know what Jesus is coming after? He's coming after a bride that has no spot or wrinkle, who's ready, right? Who loves the Lord, who's been waiting, right? Is that what the Bible says? Okay. I'm asking questions because, again, I want you to catch something that you can grab a hold of. That's who Christ is coming after, is a bride who has prepared herself and made herself ready. I'm a, I'm a bride, amen? amen? Come on now. I'm making myself ready. Didn't John the Baptist say the same thing? Amen? And I'm just asking, what was his message? What was John the Baptist's message? Repent, right? What does repent mean? Get clean, Amen? Prepare a way for the Lord. Prepare a way for the Lord. What does that mean? Get yourself ready. He's coming. Get yourself ready. He's coming. Get yourself ready. He's coming. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Get yourself ready. He's coming. Prepare a way for the Lord. For his, Make His way straight. You make His way straight. You get prepared. You get ready. You know what our biggest focus is? Is on what's going on left, what's going on right, and we're not getting ourselves ready. Come on now. How can you see? How can you behold? How can you grasp that, that one thing that we really should be getting ready for? How can you look ahead and get ready for this when everything else is trying to get you distracted from being prepared for this? Amen? Amen. Round Ann and Veronica got married a few weeks ago. Praise God. Amen? Woo! Hallelujah. They're even showing you today that they're married. <laughs> Amen? Amen? But you know what? Weeks before, I tell you the truth, they were focused. They were focused on getting married. Amen? Amen. They weren't getting distracted. Even if they were trying to get distracted, that thing was so focused within them, they caught hold of the they had caught hold of the vision. We need to get ready. We need to get ready. This thing is happening. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. A few more weeks, a few more days. Oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know. Maybe I need no, you don't need to do that. You need to keep your eyes focused. You need to keep your eyes focused. Going forward. Don't look back. Don't look to the right or the left. Keep on going forward, amen? amen. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about that. God's got it, amen? God's got it. God's got it. God's got it, amen? Did he not prepare a table before you? 
Oh my gosh. He prepared a table and made a beautiful thing into it. I mean, it was awesome. Amen? Amen? Everything was set up. Everything was set up. All they had to do was show up. <laughs> All they had to do was show up. But if they didn't have faith, they didn't have vision, would they have been there? No. It takes faith to get married. Can I get her name in? Amen. Amen. You need to see yourself with that spouse of yours in the future. Can I get an amen? Amen. That's the only reason why things work out is because what God brings together, He gives you a vision and a purpose to be together. Amen? Amen. You guys see that? Yep. So this God-inspired vision is called Chazon. Say a Chazon. Chazon. Okay, it means to behold. It means to see. But it also means to, uh, to perceive with your understanding. Again, that's that beholding part. It's not just looking. But you've got to perceive that what you're looking at is that reality. Okay? Because again, the spiritual things can be a reality in your life. Amen? Amen. They can be, or they can't. I know a lot of people who don't see what I see. But I perceive things that other people can't see. Good and bad, amen? Amen. Why? Amen. Because I have different eyes that I see with. Okay? But it's no different. Really, what God wants you to do is get a revelation of, of that you can do the same thing. He gives you everything that you need. All you have to do is activate it from faith. Amen? He wants everyone to see. Amen? Amen. He wants everyone to see. Why do you think He came? So that you can remain blind? No. What Did Jesus cause anyone who was blind not to see? Anyone. Anyone that wanted to see, did he just say, oh, no, no, you, you've got to continue being blind for a while. Is that what he was saying? Did he ever say that to anybody? I'm asking. No. No. Did everyone that had, that wanted to see, did they not get retain their sight? Yes. Yes. Everyone that asked for, for sight received their sight. Everyone that was deaf, Received their hearing. Everyone that was dumb or now had the opportunity to be smart. Amen? Or have an opportunity to comprehend. Amen? See, dumbness is nothing more than the lack of ability to comprehend. Am I right? You're right. Come on now. But if you can... See, there's a deaf and dumb spirit. Say deaf and dumb. Deaf and, deaf and dumb. You know why it's together, deaf and dumb? You know why it's not just a deaf spirit and or a dumb spirit? You know why the spirit is both deaf and dumb? It's because faith comes by hearing. hearing. There's a deaf and dumb spirit that doesn't want you to hear so that you won't be able to understand. I rebuke this deaf and dumb spirit. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. Because God wants you to hear and understand. Amen. Amen? I rebuke this deaf and dumb spirit. In Jesus' name, no more. Say no more. No more. No more. I want to understand and I want to hear. Amen? Amen? Amen. Mm. When faith catches vision, it has no choice but to explode. When faith catches vision, it has no choice but to explode. Isn't faith powerful? Isn't the Word of God powerful? What does the Word of God do? <laughs> what does the Word of God do? Hey, I'm going to try to get him back over here. What is God trying to do? Bring power into your life, right? Amen. So you can break the chains of darkness, right? Come on now. Break down that wall that divides. Amen? Amen. 
It causes things that that are not as if they are. Amen? That's what faith is, right? Faith is the ability to see things that are not yet, but already are. Amen. Am I right? You don't see them, but you do. That's why you behold it. And then you bring it in to your existence. Amen? Amen. Faith needs to be activated. And when activated, it brings forth life and purpose. Amen? Amen. Let me see if this last thing. Actually, let me... I've got a scripture here. <laughs> Mark eleven twenty four. Mark eleven twenty four. In Jesus' name. I'm even speaking a little tank over there. Amen. Come on now. I'm speaking tanks language. You guys know that, right? Tank is trying to talk to me. You know what he's saying? Praise God. Amen? So I'm speaking back to Tank. You're right. Praise God. Before you know it, he's going to start speaking. In Jesus' name. Amen? Come on now. I don't care what I see. I know what God can do. Amen? What the devil is trying to do for evil, God is going to turn it around for his goodness. Amen? Amen. Mark 11. You guys there? Amen. 11.24. That means praise God oh, in tank language. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Amen? Here he comes, Pastor Mike. I see him. He's holding up his hands. Hallelujah. I see it. Therefore, I say to you, who's he talking to? Us. Everyone. He says me. Say me. Oh, me. me. Yeah. Is he talking to you this morning? Yes. yes. Okay. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask, what does whatever mean? What? Anything. Is there any kind of boundary to that? No. 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 Is he talking to you this morning? Yes. Okay. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray. Okay? So it's not when you're doing anything else. It's when you're praying. Who do you pray to? God. Who do you pray to? God. Who do you pray to? God. No. Who do you pray to? No, you don't pray to Jesus. Who do you pray to? Yourself. I heard Father. I heard... I'm trying to get specific here. I'm trying to uncover some things because we don't just pray to God. God is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Come on now. Amen. Am I right? Amen. Jesus keeps on saying, you're not praying to me. You're praying to your Father. Amen. Come on now. Amen. I'm serious. you got to pray to somebody, but you got to know who you're praying to. Amen? Amen. He's not just God. You have a specific per person that you need to go to. Amen? Come on now. Now, if you guys were wanting to pray to, uh, you know, and I'm not trying to. Let's say that you wanted to call me up. You wanted to talk to me. Okay? And then you get my wife on the phone. Or one of my daughters. Or even my son on the phone. Let's say you get my son on the phone. Okay? And his name is Mike Jr. Okay? Are you talking to Mike? No. No. You're not talking to whom you want to talk to. But his name is Mike. And he's afraid of it. I mean, you can technically talk to any afraid of there, right? And eventually, it'll get to me. But see, you're wanting to talk to me personally. And that's the same thing God wants you to do. He wants you to be personable. Amen. When you're talking to somebody, you're not just talking to anybody. You're talking to somebody. Amen. And he has, he has an identity. Amen? Amen? He's God, yes. 
But He's also your Father. Okay? And so when you pray, you're praying to the... Father. You're praying to the... Father. Father. You're praying to the... Father. Father. Amen? Amen? Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe. Believe that you will receive them and you will have them. Amen? Is that what is saying that in my Bible? What about yours? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them. Am I right? Yeah. Now see, there's, there's, there's something there that tends to block our prayers. And this is it. It's called unforgiveness. Okay? I'm trying to teach you guys something. I'm trying to get you guys to get a revelation that maybe the reason why your prayers haven't been answered is because of this one thing right here. Okay? One, one thing is that you haven't been focused. You didn't know that you had to pray to Father God. But now you do. Amen? Amen. And you can come and pray to Father God. Amen? Whatever you ask, it shall be given. Amen? But then he says, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. What does that mean? If you have anything against anyone, what does that mean? Let it go. Let it go. Do we often hold on to grudges? Yes. Offenses? Anyone. Does anyone mean anyone? Does that mean father, mother, brother, sister, wife, cousin, best friend, enemy, enemy, yep. even our enemies? Yes. Amen. Right? Forgive them. Amen. Forgive them. Can we say forgive them? Forgive them. I need to learn how to forgive. Amen? Amen. Amen. That your father, see, there we go. See how that came about? That your father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. Amen? Amen? But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father forgive you. Okay? You guys understand? Mm -hmm. It's your Father who hears. It's your Father who will answer. It's your Father who will either release you or bind you to the thing that you are trying to get out of. It's your Father. Jesus has nothing to do with this part. Okay? Because really all we're doing is accessing the Father through Jesus. Yeah. Amen? There's another passage. And it's not in here. Where's that? John 14, 14. I know I'm running a little bit uh, beyond this, but I need to get it out. Amen? I'm trying to help somebody out here. 1413. Well, 1412. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Amen? Amen. And greater works. Say greater works to Jesus. Greater works. Isn't that something? Because I go to my Father. Now Jesus, Jesus is now going back to his Father, right? So where's Jesus right now? He's with the Father, right? Okay, now, verse 13. And whatever you ask in my name. Okay? So who are we praying to? The Father. Father. We're praying to the Father. And how do we ask? In, in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Okay? And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. That my Father may be glorified in the Son. You guys see that? Yeah. So Jesus is being used. But he's used as an access point. Okay? He's being used as an access point. He says no one can come to the Father 
but by me. Amen. So we go to the Father through Jesus. Amen. So every time we pray, okay, we say, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. Okay? Father. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You guys hear me? I hear yeah. I want you to access your faith because now you know and, and I'm telling you the truth, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Amen. Right? Because they don't know the truth. And the truth can't set them free. Amen. But if you know the truth, then the truth will set you free. And you'll have more faith in praying. You don't need me to pray. Seriously, guys. You don't need me. I'm trying to get you to Jesus. Amen? Amen? Amen. Seriously. You can lay hands on the sick. Didn't he not say that greater things shall you do? Amen. Greater things shall you do. Amen. Amen. You don't need me. As long as you have faith. As as you, have faith you can move mountains. Amen. You can tell the devil, be removed, be cast down. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. I'm trying to get you guys to look a little bit further down the road. Because it's not about me. It's about what God can do through you. God wants to work greater things in you. Amen? He wants to expand your vision to where you can see more than just what's happening today. Amen? I'm serious. Because things can happen. Things will happen. Amen? If you have faith. faith. And you have vision. vision. You have to see. Amen? Can we give God some praise? Thank you.